Good morning, Faculty of Science students. Thank you for joining us today. I hope everyone is doing well this morning. My name is Nancy Chibri, and I am the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Programs and Student Affairs for the Faculty of Science. I will be your MC today for this online seminar where you will hear from four of our current student ambassadors and learn from their experiences as a student in the Faculty of Science. I will also discuss some of the student resources excuse me, <clears throat> available to you at the University of Calgary and within the Faculty of Science. The second part of our session will include a Q&A where you can ask a question about our presentation topics or anything else that you're hoping to learn about today. So we're gonna open up the chat. I see that a bunch of people have already said hello. So welcome everyone again. So we're gonna open up the chat sh shortly. So you can start sending us your questions for the Q&A. And we have Ellie Zygmunt join us today. And Ellie Zygmunt is the manager for our USC advisors and is here to help answer some of your burning questions that you would like answers to. So I'd first like to start off with a very quick poll. Uh, I'd like to know where are you joining us from today? And hopefully you can see the poll, it's come up. We see a few from the Calgary, oh, a bunch from the Calgary area, outside of Canada, that's fantastic. Within Canada, somewhere in Alberta. Numbers are still moving. So the majority of people today are joining us from the Calgary area. Um, our next group is from outside of Canada, followed by, it's tied for third for somewhere in Alberta and within Canada. Very cool. Thank you for doing that. So before we begin, I'm gonna switch the slide first. That'd be a great idea. So before we begin our presentation, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional lands of the people of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy comprising the Sitsika, Igani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nations and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta III. So I'd like to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. So as Associate Dean for Undergraduate Programs and Student Affairs, one part of my portfolio is overseeing all academic programs along with the creation of new programs in the Faculty of Science. I work closely with departments and professors along with Associate Deans from other faculties to help make some, the, some academic decisions and make sure that the academic experience for students in science as well for students in other faculties taking science courses be the best it can be. The second part of my portfolio is student affairs and it's supporting students. This includes overseeing our advising office and supporting and helping students navigate the academic pieces should they encounter financial, health or personal issues that might impact their success in a course or progression in their program. I also help to put students in contact with the various units and the various resources that are available through the university. And I'll be discussing just a few of those resources later on. One thing I wanna make a note of is, is I always encourage students to first reach out to their professors to discuss options when encountering problems. So do not wait until the end of the semester to notify your professor of issues that you've encountered during the semester. At that point, it's difficult for them to find options for you. The earlier you can alert them to issues, the earlier they can have that discussion about options going forward in that course. And if that is an issue that you feel hasn't been addressed, that's when you can reach out to the associate head or the head of the department offering the course would be the next person you would speak to. And I work closely with the professors and associate heads and heads in finding possible solutions that will help support students. So we have some fantastic presenters lined up for you today, and they put together some key pieces about their experiences to help guide you as a new science student. So we are opening the chat now, so please feel free to start sending in your questions for our Q&A at the end of the presentation. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce our first speaker of the day, Aiden Pegador. Aiden is currently finishing his second year of biology. Take it away, Aiden. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Aiden Pagador. I'm currently in my second year of BioSci at the University of Calgary, and I'm here to share with you guys my experiences at the university as well as some tips that can help you with your experience. 
So one of my favorite classes at the university is brain and behavior, just because I like neuroscience in general, but also because I like learning about how different brain structures are involved in producing specific behaviors. So if you're also into that kind of stuff, I really highly recommend this class. Another one of my favorite classes is Intro to Cell and Molecular Biology. I really like this class because just learning about how different cellular mechanisms are um, involved in sustaining life really made me appreciate more the complexity of organisms. So fun stuff. Um, and another one of my favorite classes is poetry. I like analyzing poems. I also like learning about different poetic devices. And I really like this class because it's very fun and collaborative. We got to share our ideas in lectures and tutorial sessions, so it's pretty fun. I'm also gonna be involved in research in Dr. Phillips' lab this summer. Uh, I'm basically gonna be working with um, spinal cord injury patients, specifically on assessing and uh, comparing physiological laboratory measured symptoms of orthostatic hypotension with self-reported symptoms from spinal cord injury patients themselves. And um, how I actually learned about research at the university was by attending research information sessions by the Tiller Institute. So these information sessions are pretty informative and I learned a lot about how to participate in research as an undergrad. So basically they give you tips on how to contact professors and different research fundings that you can apply for. So I highly recommend that you go to these and they typically host these in December. So definitely watch out for that. In terms of extracurriculars, there's many different student union clubs that you can join. Um, like there's clubs that are just for fun. I was part of a dance club last year. There's also culture clubs, culture-based clubs, I mean. Um, I was part of a Filipino Student Association last year. And there's also clubs that are for service and leadership. I was part of Circle K, of, Circle K International last year too. So it's pretty fun. And um, on the right here, I put a picture of what Clubs Week looks like in Mac Hall. So basically all the different clubs have booths there and you can ask them about club information like when meetings are or about other club activities. There's also the Science Ambassador Program. Me, uh, Chelsea, Jerome and Tanvi, we're all Science Ambassadors. And um, it's been honestly really fun. I've got to host and organize virtual game nights and virtual science trivia nights, which help faculty of science students connect with each other, which is pretty hard right now because of COVID, but I feel like through these events, um, we're introducing science students with each other and they get to participate in fun activities with each other too. I've also made some posts on the Science Ambassador social media, including wellness tips, which help students distress from online learning. And um, shameless plug, follow us on Instagram, it's at UCBRScience, we post really helpful and informative content. In terms of helpful resources, the Undergraduate Science Center has been really helpful in terms of planning out my degree requirements and stuff like that. I've switched my degree twice already. Um, I went from engineering in my first year to bio sci to neuroscience next year, and they've been really helpful with all those degree transitions. Next are past sessions, which are student-led study groups. And I find these helpful because sometimes I prefer studying in groups because I get easily distracted when I'm alone. So um, yeah. And uh, I also have here a list of my favorite study spots on campus. On the right here, here's a picture of the view from the fourth and fifth floor of the Eng building. So uh, basically I get to see Eng students playing ping pong and foosball while I study. So that's a pretty nice view. On the lower left here, there's TI, which is actually pretty cool because there's some study spots where the areas are like hanging from the ceiling. I don't know if you can see it here, but it's those like four small areas there. And uh, this is where me and my friends would usually hang out and study. <laughs> and there's also the atrium, which is uh, really relaxing. There's a lot of trees. So the relaxing vibe kind of just evens out my stress while I'm doing schoolwork. That's why I like to do, that's why I like to do homework there. So uh, here I have some final words of advice for you guys. First of all, always check the course outline in B2L. It's always good to make, it's always good to make this a habit and um, really so you won't miss any deadlines and stuff. Next is to make a weekly schedule. This is really important in terms of like keeping things on track and keeping organized. And I highly recommend that you get into this habit too. 
Next is to always come to class prepared. Actually do the readings before you come to class because they really help out with helping you um, basically follow lectures and stuff and also experimental procedures. Um, next is to make some time for activities that you enjoy. It's really easy to get stuck in a routine, especially when you're doing online classes and it just helps to have something to help you distress. And finally, get involved. Join school events, join clubs. This is a really good way to meet new people and to meet people who you can kind of share your thoughts and struggles with. So um, that's about it. Uh, thanks so much. And I wish you guys the best of luck in your university experience. Thanks, Aiden. That's awesome. And thanks for pointing out some really cool spaces on campus and giving some helpful advice. Our next speaker is Chelsea Wong, and Chelsea is currently finishing her first year of biological sciences. Hi, so my name is Chelsea, and yes, I just finished my first year in biological sciences, and I'm from Calgary, Alberta. Um, one of my favorite things about the city of Calgary is that there's lots of events and outdoor activities year round. And so in terms of learning experiences from the University of Calgary, I had the opportunity to be part of the hires program in high school, as well as the Eureka Canada program. Um, this allowed me to get into research, um, which was part of the U of C. And also as an undergraduate student, I was able to participate as a senior investigator in Eureka Canada, which meant that I got to help mentor high school students in their research projects this winter. And for my most interesting class, I would say it would have to be Biology 241, because we've been given really interesting assignments that apply to the current situation of COVID right now and how it relates to our course material. And I found it super interesting of how we were able to learn things that were so applicable to our day-to-day -day lives. The professors are also very engaging and passionate about their work and just relating it to the bigger picture um, in terms of the scientific world and the real world applications of COVID-19 were really interesting to me. And then my favorite class so far has been Psych 200 because even though I've never, um, I had never done a psych class in high school, I decided just to give it a try as an option class. And I would highly recommend it because the professor I had was Dr. Holden and he was very engaging and passionate. And I just realized that I like all the concepts that we learn in psychology because it's so applicable to my life and my day to day life and just learning more about myself, but also about others. And so I think that's really exciting. And then also as part of the Faculty of Science, I was able to join the science mentorship program going into my first year. So this is where I was matched with an upper year mentor who is in the same degree and major as me. And my mentor is able to provide helpful insights into courses, degree planning, extracurriculars, and ultimately just how to enhance and make the most of my undergraduate experience. And I think it was really great to have a mentor, especially starting university in an online format and not really knowing many other people going into this university. And I could always reach out to my mentor if I have any questions or I needed advice. And we were able to meet at least twice a month to just discuss um, how things were going. In terms of extracurricular activities, I really enjoy spending time outside. Um, this includes walking on the various paths around Calgary, especially along the Boat River. And during the winter, there was a lot of outdoor skating available in Calgary and around the Rocky Mountains. Um, I'm also a competitive figure skater. I'm on the national synchronized skating team. And so outside of my program, I keep up all my skating skills and training, and I'm also a certified can skate coach, and so I like teaching other people how to skate. Um, in terms of clubs, I am a science ambassador, as Aiden mentioned before, and I was on the same team um, as all the presenters today on Champions of Science. And one of the most impactful things that I was able to do this year was create a food science video blog on YouTube. So you can go check that out on the UC We Are Science um, YouTube channel. But essentially I've um, combined my passion for baking and cooking um, with science and just started to explain some science behind food and cooking. And um, ultimately um, this summer I was able to make a baking and cooking food blog. And so the Instagram is on that slide right there. But with the videos, I try to combine a recipe that I've created on my food blog, as well as the science behind something 
um, that's involved in that recipe or process and just trying to engage science students. Helpful resources would definitely include the Undergraduate Science Center because if you have any degree planning questions at all, then it's really easy to just email them and contact them and they'll get back to you as quickly as possible with usually a really clear answer. And then also the Student Success Center is really helpful because going into first year, I was part of the first year scholars program, which I believe you need to have an average of 90% or higher going into your program. And um, it gives you access to different workshops and one-on-one -on -one advising that you can access through the Student Success Center. And then also available to everybody are different strengths tests and virtual career and volunteer fairs that are available there. Um, other than that, the UC library has been really helpful when I'm doing different labs and science courses, especially biology, where you might need to find different articles that relate to your labs and get more information there. And also students, teaching assistants and professors are one of the main uh, resources that I've used. Um, joining different group chats for different classes just to reach out to other students, especially in an online environment to get to know people and ask for help is a really great way to learn. And I think that um, if you really understand a concept and someone's struggling and you're able to help them out, that means that you can both help them out and that you really understand something. And so it's great to make those connections. TAs and professors are also great, but it's just a gentle reminder to be respectful when you're contacting them through email, especially on these online environments, because even though it's not face-to-face, -face, you should still have the same amount of respect when you're communicating with them but they can be very helpful and I recommend you contact them as soon as possible if you have any questions or problems with course material. And then lastly, in terms of advice for study tips, I recommend reviewing constantly and planning ahead because coming out of high school, um, depending on how your school is structured, um, you may find university more of a fast pace. And so exams and tests come up really quickly and back to back and so it's easier to review constantly rather than just reviewing just before a test because then it fi I find that there's like a larger workload and so it's more overwhelming. So if you just keep on reviewing constantly, you shouldn't have to review too much before the actual test. And to plan ahead is really important. As Aiden mentioned, checking the D2L course outline, there's usually a bunch of the quiz dates and assignment deadlines there. So if you have a scheduler or a planner, it's really useful to put all those deadlines in there so you know what's coming up and what you can prioritize in terms of all of your different tasks. And then for online learning, I found that taking breaks, keeping hydrated and active and changing up learning environment is really important. And so when I mean taking breaks, it could just be taking a walk outside or even just in between lectures doing a couple of jumping jacks. Um, keep a water bottle by your desk and try to just get moving throughout the week so you're not just stationary at your desk. Um, I also found that by moving my laptop, so where I watch my lectures to like the kitchen or to the basement instead of just my room, it changes up my learning environment and it allows me to just not be as bored just sitting in one place all the time. And then lastly, just to incoming science and U of C students, be open-minded in your first year. Um, there's so many opportunities available at the university. There's like hundreds of clubs. And if there isn't one that you are interested in, you could always try to make your own. And it's just, there's so many opportunities available to you. So just come in with an open mind. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask because concepts often introduced at the beginning of a course are built upon in the end and other courses following. And so, if you don't get something, it's really great to ask so it doesn't build up over time. And then just stay organized and come to class prepared. And I think ultimately that will help you not have a super stressful first year experience and um, just develop great habits overall. So I wish you the best of luck next year. Thank you, Chelsea, for your insight and very helpful tips. Um, and as Chelsea mentioned, uh, a science program has a lot has lots of flexibility to let you explore other programs as option courses. Um, you can look into doing a double major, a combined degree, or perhaps a, mi a minor might pique your interest. 
I'd now like to introduce our third speaker, who is Jerome Timball, and he will be going into his fourth year of biological sciences. He's finishing up his third. Hi, everyone. My name is Jerome Timball, and I'm, yeah, I just finished my third year of biological sciences here at the University of Calgary. So one of my learning experiences I did was I participated in the NeuroNexus case competition, which uh, sort of regarded problems uh, based off of neuroscience. So in my case, the problem I was presented with was detecting cannabis impairment in a non-invasive way. So my team and I uh, presented in front of judges, and this actually got a lot of interest to where we were uh, featured in two articles, one in the Chester Mirror Anchor and one in the Calgary Herald. Um, after my first year, I participated in medical research at the Health Research Innovation Center on the Foothills campus, where I um, studied airway inflammation, uh, such as like asthma. And this, uh, during this research, I sort of uh, looked at how different drugs affected different pathways that influence that airway inflammation. Uh, currently, I'm in a different medical research lab at the Hotchkiss Brain Institute, which is also on the Foothills campus. This is sort of more on the neuroscience side of things. So here I'm looking at um, hypothalamic neurons and how various drugs affect neurodevelopment in children. Um, in my first and second year, I was a mentee in the science mentorship program. And right now I am a science mentor. Uh, this helped me guide my first and second year as I, I was able to gain like tips and tricks as well as like advice for my future uh, university career as well as like certain courses that I should be taking in order to reach my goals and things like that. Uh, outside of school, I do uh, volunteer at the Alberta Children's Hospital. This is really convenient because the Alberta Children's Hospital isn't too far away from the main campus. so. After lectures, I would normally just take the bus to the children's hospital and then volunteer and sort of like take my mind off of things. Um, I enjoy snowboarding and I'm part of the U Calgary Ski and Snowboard Club. This club provides uh, discounted lift tickets to nearby resorts such as Sunshine and Lake Louise. I also participated as a science fair judge for the Calgary Youth Science Fair. This was a really cool experience because I was able to see younger kids be influenced by science as well as give my feedback on their, show them how to do things and things like that. Um, some helpful resources is definitely the Undergraduate Science Center. So in my first year, I started off as a chemistry major and then I switched over to a biology major. They did a really good job in making sure that transition was done pretty smoothly. Uh, they ensured I was taking the proper classes as well as um, telling me which classes would benefit me most for uh, my future goals. I really enjoyed the Gallagher Library as well. This library was sort of located in the middle of engineering as well as all the other science classes. And this was a good place to be because it wasn't too far from everything else. Uh, some advice is to attend lectures and pre-read lecture slides. I think uh, pre-reading lecture slides is a way of actively learning because you're able to sort of like formulate questions in your head and then when you attend those lectures, you're able to answer those questions. Uh, try new things and just start discover new interests. This is really important because you don't really know what you like or don't like. So I believe like joining clubs and trying things like the case competition will help open more doors for the future and don't be afraid to ask for help. I think uh, when you're, the earlier you are to ask for help, the easier you are to build a strong foundation so you can build off of like um, future courses as well as whatever they present you in that specific course. And yeah, that's everything. So good luck in you guys' first year. Thanks, Jerome, that's awesome for the advice. So as you've learned, uh, there are various ways to be involved in research as an undergraduate student, and you can do it in your first year. Uh, so we'll be posting information through on various platforms throughout the academic year to alert you to the various ways to get involved in research. Um,
Our final speaker, and she's on the screen, that's awesome, is Tanvi Sankar, who is finishing a degree in natural sciences with concentrations in biology and chemistry. So hi everyone, my name is Tanvi, and I'm just, like as Nancy said, I'm finishing up my fourth year of a natural science degree, concentrating in biology chemistry, and I also have a minor in law and society. So as I finish my degree, I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of insight into the past four years for me. So unlike the other three, I haven't really been involved in research too much since that's just not something that I find interest in, but I have been involved in a ton of other opportunities such as science and marketing related internships outside of university, hackathons, and more. So I'm going to give you some insight into my favorite classes over the past four years. So the first one was Science 501, which was the capstone project course in natural science. And this was the final project for my degree, and my group investigated the implications of artificial radiation usage on the development of crops grown for human consumption. So in the corner of the screen there, you can see a bunch of like radishes that we grew for our project. The next course was invertebrate zoology. So this was a really interesting class because we got to dissect and examine a ton of different species. So there's also a couple pictures on the bottom there. The next class is biology of fungi. So this one was pretty interesting because we got to learn about different mushrooms. We even got to like sample some cheese in our lab for this class. So that was a lot of fun. And lastly was MedSci 321, which is immunology. And this was just a super informative class. We learned so much. There was so much collaboration and group projects. So if you're interested in more of like the health science part of things or like how the body works, I really recommend taking this course in your upper years. In terms of extracurricular activities, I was super involved in clubs and extracurriculars on and off campus. So the first thing was student union clubs. I was part of a lot of clubs such as RoboGals, which teaches programming and robotics to young girls interested in STEM fields, 3D printing, which I got to learn how to use the 3D printing technology, and I got to print out some pretty cool things. Um, I was involved in cultural clubs, such as the Indian Students Association, and I was also part of the dance team, so we got to perform at events of hundreds of people and help host those events too. I was also part of mentorship and volunteering clubs. And lastly, in my first year, I was a photographer for The Gauntlet, which is UFC's publication monthly publication. So I got to go visit the, the Calgary International Film Festival and take pictures and see some cool people. The next thing I was part of was Science Ambassadors. And as a couple of the other guys said, this is such a fun way to get involved. And I really like it because you just interact a lot with like students and you make science more enjoyable and fun for university students. So I really recommend joining the Science Ambassador Program or the Science Mentorship Program. And lastly, orientation leader. I was an orientation leader for my second and third year of university. And I really like the sense of campus community that it gave me. I got to meet so many cool people. I got to make so many friends. So after this year, I really recommend signing up as an orientation leader. Um, next is helpful resources. So here are just a few resources which were really beneficial to me. The first is the Undergraduate Science Center. So I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've talked to the science advisors regarding program requirements, registration, et cetera. Um, it's seriously such a lifesaver and especially for first year students, it's just really reassuring to have that constant, constant guidance and support. The next thing is career services. So they help you out with resume tips, interview tips, and then job hunting. The next thing is libraries for printing last minute. So you can actually upload money onto your uni card. So in case you need to print any like labs or assignments last minute to submit, you can just have money ready on your card and you can print things. The next thing is study spots. So these are a couple of my personal favorites. The first thing is EEL, which, which, is in the, which is the top photo there. And this is a super modern and cool building, which has all of your bio and chemistry labs. And the next thing is the law library. This is a super quiet space. There's also a picture of that down there. And the next thing is empty classrooms. So just take advantage of whatever you can find around the university and just 
go and study there and just explore the campus and enjoy your time. And lastly, um, active living, I think is a super helpful and kind of underrated resource because a lot of the times you're focused so much on school and studying and just sitting down all day that you don't really have time to like exercise your actual body in addition to your mind. So um, all U of C students who are taking three or more classes have access to the U of C gym for free. There's also fitness and dance studios. And there's also dodgeball intramurals and other fitness related clubs that you can join. And lastly, some advice that I have for incoming students is to number one, get involved. Um, there are so many opportunities on campus, whether it's academics or recreation, just fun events, etc. So this will really contribute to your university experience instead of just the monotonous routine of going from one class to another. The next tip, the next word of advice I have is to stay organized. It's super easy to fall behind, especially if you're taking four or five classes. So make sure to create a weekly schedule for yourself and stay, stay on top of things, do the required readings, etc. And the next thing I have is don't be afraid to ask for help. So profs are there to support you. They want to see you succeed. So it might be kind of intimidating, especially in first year to approach a prof and say that you don't know how to do something, but they'll understand, like they're there for you. So just make sure you reach out, make those connections and it's really beneficial. And lastly, it's okay to struggle. Um, I know a lot of people have the assumption that like, okay, I need to get a 4.0 GPA. I need to be super involved in everything. And it's kind of overwhelming. Um, personally, I found that there was a huge learning curve between leaving high school and entering first year. And so I think if you get involved, stay organized and ask for help when you need it. Um, that should really kind of help you reduce that initial learning curve. But if you're not able to, then just know that it's okay. And university is four years long, so you have time to kind of get better at things that you may not be good at in the beginning. So with that said, um, I hope everyone enjoys their university experience. And yeah, all the best. Oh, thanks, Tanvi. That's awesome. So as Tanvi discussed, there are plenty of in-class experiences for research, uh, ways to be a leader, to stay connected, and most of all, to meet new people in science. I want to take this time to congratulate Tanvi as she will be officially graduating this June. And I can't wait to see how Tanvi will continue to be a champion of science. So thank you to all our students for their helpful tips and sharing their experiences with you today. Uh, I hope there are some takeaways uh, for you. And as you heard several students mention today, do not be afraid to ask for help because you won't regret it. Now, so I'd next like to briefly discuss uh, the various resources that are available. And I've just listed some of them on this slide, but trust me, there's many more out there. Um, you've heard several students today refer to the Undergraduate Science Center. Center that's the, we refer to it as a USC. Um, that should be your first place of um, your first stop when you're reaching out for help. Um, they provide advising. I'll just click change the slide too. We'll talk about the USC. Here we go. Um, they provide program advising, engagement, and internship. Uh, the USC should be, as I said, your first stop if you have any questions about your program or progression in your degree. Um, also, too, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, please go ahead and check out their website so you can see it here listed on the slide to learn more about student opportunities, resources, upcoming events, and just ways to stay connected. Speaking of upcoming events, we have two that we're going to bring to you. And those are registration webinars for first year students. So the USC is hosting two of these registration webinars taking place on May 3rd and May 4th at 4 p.m. Calgary time. Um, you'll learn about tools to help build your timetable, where to find your degree re uh, requirements, and just what to do if you get stuck with registration. You know, taking time out of your busy day to attend these webinars uh, can probably save you hours of frustration and anxiety when it's time to register. So I'd like to run another little quick poll. Um, how many would be interested in attending our, our registration workshops? So if you want to enter it in right now, yes, Monday, May 3rd, yes, 
Tuesday, May 4th, or I'm not sure, or no, I'm not interested. So we see, oh, Monday is a very popular day. And, and, and it's understandable that you're not quite sure yet. We all have busy lives. But I, I think it's important to make the time to fit one of these uh, webinars into your schedule. So thank you. So the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is the Student Success Center. Um, <clears throat> they provide services and programs to ensure you make the most of your time at university. They have uh, the advisors, learning support staff, and they have writing support staff will help you enhance your skills and achieve your academic goals. If you want to explore other degrees and learn about awards and scholarships, this is a place you go, where you go. Uh, remember, if you have any questions about your program or any questions about science, your first stop should be the USC and not the SSC. So the students seem to mix them up, but if you do reach out to the SSC, they will direct you back to the USC if it's question specific about science. Another resource we have is student wellness services. So they offer medical care and procedures, which includes mental health support, chiropractors, and massage therapists, to name just a few. If you're feeling overwhelmed, anxious, or you need someone to help give you guidance, the counselors at Wellness are there to support you. This is a free and confidential service for all UFC students. You know, talking with an expert for even five minutes can make a huge difference and positive impact in your life. Another important resource is Student Accessibility Services, referred to as SAS. Um, <clears throat> they facilitate an accessible learning environment for undergraduate and graduate students with documented disability and or medical conditions. Accommodations are intended to increase access to curriculum and reduce any barriers that you're experiencing that are related to medical or um, a learning disability. Now, you can see there's a list uh, on this slide um, where that, you know, if you have attention deficit hyperactivity disorders, and we can go through that list. If there's something that you are dealing with that is not captured on this list, please reach out to SAS to consult with them. An, an example here would be uh, if someone was pregnant, sometimes in the last uh, trimester of pregnancy, you have to be close to a bathroom or you have to frequent, frequent a washroom quite often, you could go and register with SAS. Um, because during a test, maybe they'll situate you close to a washroom and they do what's called stop the clock. So you, you're writing and then they stop the clock, you do your thing, you take a break or you go to the washroom and then the clock starts again when you come back to write. And they also have people with migraines, they have rooms with um, low lighting, it's very quiet, things like that, distraction free spaces. So please check them out. The next resource I'd like to talk about is the Writing Symbols Lodge. So the University of Calgary welcomes and respects and supports the rich diversity of Indigenous learners, their communities, cultural traditions, and aspirations in post-secondary education. The Writing Symbols Lodge plays a vital role in supporting First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students in their pursuit of knowledge and higher education. So Please check out their website to learn more about upcoming events and all that they offer to students. I'd now like to talk to you about our science mentorship program. So the science, and you've heard it mentioned several times today by our ambassadors. So the science mentorship program connects first year and second year students with senior undergraduate students to help them navigate the transitions into university life in their first two years, two years on campus. You know, mentees benefit by having someone they can talk to that has been through similar experiences. And you heard, you've heard some of those experiences today. The science mentorship program holds monthly social events and brings in guest speakers to answer students' questions on a variety of topics. So they're a great group. I wish I had that when I was an undergrad. And finally, our Science Ambassador Program. Our Science Ambassadors work hard to help students stay connected. They are leaders in the departments and faculty, and you have met some of them here today. Um, they're always busy, they're making videos, they're taking pictures, they're helping with communications, they're connecting students with, um, with the community, with science, and, and the list goes on. And they volunteered to be here today to present to you. So if you happen to miss any of this information that I presented, you, presented to you today on our resources, or you want to learn more about these resources, please click on the file 
student resources. I believe it's now showing up in the chat. And so be sure to download it. So I think I've chatted long enough. Um, I'm sure you have lots of questions. I saw quite a few in the chat come up. Um, so we'd like to help answer some of those questions today. So as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, Ellie Zygmunt, who is a manager for our USC advisors is here and there, you can see her right there, is here to help answer some of your questions. So Ellie, take it away. Alrighty, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am the wizard behind the chat curtain who's been trying to keep up with all of you and uh, posting some of those resources and the sticky message up at the top. Great questions coming in through the chat. Like I said, I'm gonna try to answer as many as we can. Um, I see that there's a lot of registration questions. This is where I will plug the registration webinars again. All of those burning questions about how do you schedule builder and how many courses are full time and all of those scheduling tips and tricks, we will go over those in the registrar, uh, registration webinars. Come hang out with me and the other program advisors on May 3rd and 4th. Um, details on that is in the student resource documents. So we're looking forward to seeing you then. I. Well, welcome back all of our lovely students uh, to answer some of your questions. Um, and I think what I'll actually start with, um, because all of you are science ambassadors, how did you get involved with the science ambassador program and what was the application process like for you? Okay, I guess I'll, I'll get started with that. So I joined the Science Ambassador Program in my second year, I believe. And previously I had heard about it, but I didn't know that just anyone in science could apply to join. So my friend told me to join because she was on the program the year before. And I think there was an online application where you just had to submit a couple of questions about like who you are, like what you're interested in, your experience. And then I had a brief interview with a couple of the uh, like the science ambassadors and I was selected after that and I think it's a pretty it was a pretty rewarding experience I've learned a lot I've made a lot of lifelong friends so I really recommend getting involved in the science ambassador program I can go next. Um, my sister was actually um, a science, well, she is a science ambassador, but she's graduating this year. So I had heard of her like talking about all these different events that she was going to and all these videos she was making and how much fun she was having um, in the Faculty of Science. And so entering my first year, I decided to also apply. And um, then I got accepted and I was really happy because I was able to be on the same team as my sister. Um, even though she's graduating this year, it was nice to have just like that one year with her. Um, I, for my process of getting, becoming a science ambassador, I think it was an online application as well. And then a Zoom interview over the summer. And then um, I just heard from Kathleen, who's the lady that manages it all. Um, and then I've just been a science ambassador ever since. Uh. I think I heard about them through email. They emailed me and then I just sent my application and I also did a Zoom interview. I think Tanvi actually interviewed me. <laughs> that was pretty cool actually. <laughs> yeah, I also got an email and then application and then uh, interview. And uh, yeah, that was about it. Bottom line, our science ambassadors are awesome. You totally want to be one someday. So you have something to look forward to. Um, next question um, about research and getting involved in research. Um, maybe I'll start with you, Aiden. Um, how did you get involved with working in a lab and doing research? Um, how, lots of questions about how do I do? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, basically, I attended the research and information sessions by the Taylor Institute. They were really helpful, and uh, they basically gave me tips on how to contact professors. I think that's the first step. You have to contact professors. I think I sent emails to, like, 10 professors at least and heard back from one. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I also sent a resume, 
and yeah i i did get interviewed but it was it wasn't like a formal one it was pretty casual it was kind of like getting to know the lab members and stuff yeah the way i got involved in research is um in my first year my mentor like sort of helped me and like helped me like write a template on how to email professors so i think i emailed about like 30 professors and got back from like six and then like four or five of them were like you have to take certain classes before you can come into my lab because i want you to have like a greater understanding on everything which makes sense and then for the one professor that took me in, he sort of like yeah interviewed me casually and then asked me on like what i know and stuff and like uh kind of quizzed me a lot but but uh, yeah, it all worked out at the end, but that's basically how you do it. Oh, and also um, the way you find the professors is there's like a, like there's like their contact information on like the UFC uh, websites or on like the health sciences, I think. Whatever faculty you're, on, you're in, whether it's like biology or chemistry, you can click on their profile and read their research. And then you can see if that's something you want to do. And then if it's something you want to do, you sort of just like, read more on them than email them saying like, I like your stuff because of so-and-so. And then, yeah, they'll, they'll email you back. Great advice. Thank you. Um, gonna answer some questions about changing your program and changing your major. Um, this is one of my favorite questions as a program advisor, because as you've heard from some people today, um, the major that you start out in at university may not be the one that you finish in. Um, so it's really common for people to change their programs within the faculty and within the institution. Um, if you're thinking about doing that, we do have an application process for this. It's called change of program. Uh, we crack that application open on October 1st every year, and the deadline to apply is February 1st. Um, all programs in science do have an admission GPA attached to them, um, where we look at a particular set of grades uh, to see if you qualify to change your program. But it's super common to do that. It's the same process to also add or drop a minor onto your program, which is a smaller complementary area of study. Um, if you're thinking of applying to or switching your concentrations, this goes out to all the natural science majors in the room. Uh, same process, you would apply to do that starting this October. Um, but yeah, that's the really high level overview of change of program, but it happens fairly often. Um, and for our ambassadors who did change their program, maybe they can talk a little bit about maybe why you decided to switch um, and what prompted you to change your major. Uh, I can go. Uh, well, I started out with engineering in my first year. I chose engineering because most of my friends took engineering. So uh, there's not really much of like thinking there. <laughs> but um, the reason why I changed my major was because I like, it's a matter of personal preference. I didn't really um, like physics and stuff like that. I think I'm more of a bio guy. So I switched to bio in my second semester of first year. But then I also took a psychology course. Um, so I learned about neuroscience and stuff like that. So I got more interested in that kind of stuff and I decided to transfer again into neuroscience. Yeah, I also took a, a bunch of biology courses. I think my first semester I took one and then I really enjoyed that. So then in my second semester of my first year, I took another one and I also really enjoyed it. But, but then I started like talking around with my friends and like talking to different professors on like uh, whether it's a good decision and like the different um, paths I can take into what I want to do. And that sort of uh, influenced me in, in uh, switching my major to biology. Awesome, thank you. Um, next question, 
advice for picking your classes for the very first time. Um, I've been posting links to our program sequencing guides um, that are also linked to them uh, in the resource document that you should be able to see in the chat. Um, that covers what we would recommend you take uh, in the first year of your program and in years two, three, and four. Um, but from a, an experience perspective, maybe I'll start with Chelsea. Uh, any advice that you would pass along to our new first year students? Um, now that you're just about done the first year of your program, uh, tips and tricks, picking courses for the first time and scheduling. Uh, yeah, I definitely recommend using the recommended course sequence guide. Um, in terms of going into first year, if you're in um, like biological sciences like I am, it was pretty like set out. There's like required course, like um, from like first year and then as you progress into second, third and fourth year, you get more options as to what you can choose and how to plan your own degree. But in terms of first year, it's more of um, getting all those prerequisites for higher level courses. And so you don't really have too much of um, options to choose from. And so I, did um, math, physics, bio, and chemistry um, in both semesters. And then I had two, room for two options because I took five classes in each, each semester. And so I took sociology and psychology. But um, in terms of planning for second year, um, it's also quite structured in um, the course sequence that recommends that you take like certain biology classes and chemistry classes. And the order that it gives it to you is um, quite great because um, you need prerequisites sometimes within that second year as well. And then in terms of option classes, I think that um, just going into all of the program descriptions and all the course descriptions, just looking through that list, um, it's really helpful if you just like point out a few classes that maybe you'd be interested in, like in a field of psychology or sociology or like physics or math or something like that. Um, also, if you go into the U of C calendar, it shows you like the full requirements. So sometimes you need a certain amount of credits of non-science options and a certain amount of credits of science options. And there's a limited amount of 200 level courses that you can take. And so kind of just, I took um, a couple, like a week or two kind of just figuring out what a general outline of what I want my whole undergraduate career to look like in terms of having the right prerequisites and not um, like having too many 200 level courses and just kind of planning out in general. And so I think just going into first year though, um, just following the recommended course sequence and then perhaps picking two options is a great choice. Thanks, Chelsea. Uh, any, anything else that any of our other students would like to add on to that? Solid, solid advice. Um, if I if I can make a recommendation from the program advising perspective, um, starting to look at those guides now is a really good idea. Just planning ahead wherever you can. Uh, it gives you time to get in touch with an advisor if you need to. Uh, it gives you time to join one of those registration webinars and look at all the info that's online. Um, lots of resources and help to support you. Um, and something to keep in mind, you're not going to mess up. It's all going to be good. Everyone goes through first year and comes out the other side richer and wiser for the experience. So if it feels like it's a lot, it's okay. Um, you are definitely going to get your bearings. And when you come to second year, you're going to be like, oh, I'm an old pro at this. This is, this is totally fine. So you can do this. You're going to be amazing and awesome. I, I'd like to add one thing, Ellie, to that piece is make sure you register early. Don't leave it until August because what happens is we have reserved seats for students that require those courses. So there is a seat reserved technically for you, but it's only there until I believe the end of July and that for some courses and then it opens up um, any unused seat opens up to any student in many of our courses that where a student has a prerequisite, then they can register for it. So you don't want to avoid the hassle at the end. So register as early as you can in your courses. And again, if you're dealing with challenges, reach out to the USC. They are there to support you and help connect you. Yeah. And you can contact program advising via email. 
you can call our front desk. We still have our, our phone service up and, and operating. Uh, and you can join the drop-in line through QLIS. Um, we try to see as many students as we can in a day, but we are a big faculty. So please take advantage of the resources we do have posted online. Um, they're there to help you be able to plan um, and get as far as you can. But if you get stuck, a program advisor will help you get out of that jam. Um, great questions from everybody. Thank you to our student ambassadors for your presentations and for answering the questions today. Uh, I think we're going to turn it back over to Nancy to wrap us up for the morning. Thank you, Ellie. So this wraps up our session and uh, thank you everyone for joining us today and for giving us the opportunity to highlight the wonderful things that you will experience as part of the Faculty of Science community. 